A dysfunctional family would be an understatement. You can see the, like the light in his eyes. You don't even need the fire. You can see it in the actor's eyes. This is such a weird dynamic. I'm loving it. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben and today I'll be reacting to Percy Jackson and the Olympians episode 5. I am so excited for this episode. These, this show keeps getting better with each one. Last episode was amazing with the Echidna and just seeing each monster be their own villain of that episode. Now though, we're moving on to a god being, I guess, the antagonist of the episode. I wouldn't say villain just yet, he is the antagonist. Yeah, this episode, I think, is, this chapter was mainly important because it showed that the gods of this franchise are just as much a pain to the demigods as monsters are to them. See, I think it just, for me, it always demonstrated that the demigods are basically always on their own in this world. They cannot go to, I guess, the gods who they're always meant to defend from, I guess, the world. They are meant to honour and defend these gods, yet they are just as much of a pain. And I think this, I'm hoping that this episode will be sort of it will push that point, I guess. Also something I found quite interesting is that the last episode ended with Percy being told by the Neria that his dad was proud of him. That actually happens in a chapter after he falls. Because the way they did the episode structure, it's new, it's cool. Because they, we kept, the, I kept thinking that the chapters, well, the chapter title, so the episode title was going to coincide with where the chapter was in the book, which is dad's done so far. But basically, if that was to stay true, the last episode should have ended with him falling. We shouldn't have been able to see the Nereid, he shouldn't have landed in the ocean, or the river, or whatever it was, and it should have just been cut off and left on a cliffhanger. Like, what, where does he land? Does he live? That should have been the end. But no, they actually kept it going and leant into the next chapter to have it end in a much more satisfying spot. Now that does make me wonder where this one will pick up, because I'm really hoping that it does pick up into the river, we'll get to see a full shot of the Nereid, and we get to know that he's where he needs to go next, because I think, I think that's where he learns that he needs to go to a beach or something, I can't remember exactly, but I think he has to go to a beach after he's been told by the Nereid that he needs to go there. So it still feels like there's a few things left to get from the Nereid, so I'm just hoping we get one clear shot of what she actually looks like. And then of course I know things won't be exactly like the book and I think that's fine, I just think the main points that they need to get across from that chapter, so the whole thing with Ares, the main thing they need to get across is Annabeth's fear of spiders, because that sets up a whole stuff with Arachne and it's such an important thing. If they do it, it'll make me so hopeful for like a Heroes of Olympus adaptation. Of course you have the whole um, Persebeth thing, like really gets like zoned in on here. So that's another thing I'm really hoping gets brought through. And then of course Ares, he's like the biggest part. So I'm hoping they do him right and just have him come off as smug and irritating. And just have him really rile up the characters. Yeah, as always, if you do enjoy this video, please remember to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel to grow. And if you do enjoy my content and you want to help support the channel, I do a Patreon, the link will be in the description. Over there, I'll be uploading the full reaction to this episode, so if that's something you're interested in, feel free to check it out. With that said, let's just dive on in. This quest would fail. Fail to save what matters most. I still don't remember what that line meant. He's had his chances, honestly. You've done more for me in the past few days. My father's done in my- Still are they playing on like the anger with that? Uh, Cause he always thought his dad was dead in the book. And they've completely changed that to just him being absent. And I'm liking that the anger is now there. It's gonna connect him so much more with Luke. Just breathe. Please show us a full shot of the Nereid, please. The water is, are they back in there? Are they gonna go, please, but let's be a really nice transition. And he's out of the water, so no Nereid. Still fine. Okay, this is cool, they're doing the whole like security thing. Oh, are they gonna show that he's like wanted criminal now? And have Gabe a bit Yeah. Fates? Dude, they're looking right at us. And they're snipping thread. Come on. Oh, oh, so only Annabeth saw them. Oh, this is so new, she never saw the, fa the fates. I love that the mist is actually showing like some mortals what's actually going on. It's not just completely hidden. And he's fine. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, go on, hug, please hug. I just, I knew you'd never agree, and there wasn't enough time. Yes, and friendship cemented. Good. Oh. I love this. We're getting to see more vulnerable sides to her. Bring in the spiders, and it will just really help flesh her out. Not as dead as we thought you'd be. <laughs> what happened? Short version, we need to go to Santa Monica. Santa Monica! My father's gonna meet me there. He's gonna help us. Okay. We're all gonna see the scene with the Nereid. The police think that we crashed an Amtrak train and then did that. Yeah, you're wanted. You're wanted criminals. Isn't that gonna make it hard for us to get on a train? Or really anything you need tickets for? Kinda, but you escaped in the book. You just went quickly. 
And they, okay, that's cool. So we get some more time with them just as a team walking. Cool. We don't even know who actually stole the thing or why or how deep this goes. Okay. Oh, this is nice. They're actually thinking way more about it. I'm the last person to realize this, aren't I? <laughs> Maybe when we started, my head wasn't fully in this, but since the river, it all feels different somehow. You feel more connected to your dad. Guess I just really never thought that's something he'd do for me. Oh. So maybe I gotta take things more seriously now. So yeah, your dad saved you. Now you've got to save your dad. That's not a car. It's a bike. Just let it pass. Come on. Okay, we're going straight to it. Okay, here comes Aries. We're not just trying to retrieve a thing. I think we might need to be detectives here too. I like this. They're taking in the book. It was very like I wouldn't say dumbed down, but like with the reader, you could almost very easily see the clues. Here, they need to like make things seem more obvious because Annabeth is just that smart. She's going to be thinking of these things. It doesn't have to be a thing, you know? Are you hungry? Oh boy. Oh, so awkward. It seems like a thing friends do. At least they think they do. I saw the fates. Here we go. I saw the three fates and I saw Atropus cut a piece of thread. So yeah, who is that for? Bad or... You learn the myths. When you see a string cut... It means one of us is going to die. We're all going to die. Yeah, you just don't know when. It's a warning. An omen. So what does that mean then? Because I can't, I, I need to fully read the full book again. I'm right up to, where am I? I think I'm up to the zebra step, but I haven't like realized where the thread comes in yet. I can choose to do anything I want. Need some help? Here we go. <laughs> I asked if you could use some help. Nope. <laughs> Appreciate you asking though, so long. Okay, so you recognize the fates, but not the god of war. You don't seem too good. We don't want anything from you. <laughs> you sure? Because you guys are so behind schedule. Oh, heps, pop up. Yeah. I mean, summer solstice is just a few days away, and as much as I'd love to see a good war pop off... You're just dropping hints. Let me give you a hand. Cousin? Put the pieces together. How do you even know about what we're doing out here? Because I'm doing exactly the same thing as you. Yeah. There's a halfway decent diner up the road. If you want my help, you'll meet me there. But don't dawdle. I love him already. Uh, oh, okay. Almost maybe when the glasses are on, maybe see like a flash of fire under the eyes. But it's fine if they don't do it. Because again, this is only the first season. They have plenty of opportunity to add that in when they get a bigger budget. Like he already comes off as so like annoying and trying to like get a rise out of them. It's perfect. He's already insulting them and trying to yeah, trying to get them to bite. Give me a second, I'm just starting a fight on Twitter here. <laughs> For starters. Percy was always troubled, but I never thought he was capable. Oh, he's brilliant. He's just got to find e the easiest way to provoke people. What? <laughs> Wild, right? The FBI is already spreading your picture around. I love Aries. He's perfect. You love that car. The car, really. I'm so glad it got destroyed. It's safe to say the chances of you three idiots hitchhiking the rest of the way to LA without getting arrested are slim to none. Yep. If you're supposed to be looking for the master vote too, shouldn't you be out there looking for it? There's no fear in you, is there? Oh, we're yet to see fear though. Please say that's foreshadowing. Zeus is going to war with Poseidon. You want that? Put the pieces together, you morons. The Oracle said if we returned the bolt, there wouldn't be a war. Or is that what Chiron said she meant? He's even confusing me a little. See, years before I was born, my grandpa Kronos Eight, my aunt's and uncle. Oh, you got the name chopped. Then chopped him into a million pieces and chucked him into a bottomless pit. So that kind of set the tone right out of it. A dysfunctional family would be an understatement. We will push anyone down a flight of stairs to get ahead. And that's why I love my family so much. Of course. There's a war coming. And in reality, I think he's okay with that. I think he feels mm. it's just time for a war. So we're gonna have a war. You can see the, like the light in his eyes. You don't even need the fire. You can see it in the actor's eyes. We're stopping this war. You said you can help. Can you? I feel like there should be a bit more snark from the demigods, so they, they need to be like fully just on the edge of just trying to insult him or punch him. You left your shield? Like, we got on the merry-go-round? The trooping was funny to me for a minute, but it is getting old. Oh. Okay, there's the intensity. Deal, or am I killing all three of you so I can eat in peace? You can't, you can't, you can't accept that deal. You can't really refuse a god. Okay. Great. One catch. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep the satyr here as collateral so you don't run off. What? Oh! We don't split up again. It's okay. So wait, they're separating them? If you wanted to kill us, we'd be dead by now. True. Can I just walk them to the door? Okay, so mm, I can see this. They're getting rid of the third wheel to let Percy and Annabeth's a more, more romantic relationship develop. Don't engage with them. He'll want to get you riled up, get in your head, and you can't let him. It's okay. Really. Naturally being around him will do that. Go, get the shield. I'll be here when you get back. 
And of course, Grover's like the heart and soul of it. It's going to be very hard to rile him up. And plus, he has his friendship song that he can sing. No. I feel bad now. I don't, yeah. I mean, it's interesting that they've separated them because it does help Percy and Annabeth's relationship. And they do get separated. Kind of, yeah, they do get separated in the book. But it happens a bit later on the, like, the love tunnel. I haven't seen a lot of horror movies, but this seems like exactly the kind of place they suggest to avoid. Yeah. I have to take your word for it. Never? What do you mean never? Like never, never? Something outside of camp. Neither of us is dead in a few days. We really ought to fix that. You're missing out. See it like this. So they're doing friendships. If they're just talking first, then it's going to develop. Wait, Percy, stop. Oh. Okay, what just happened? Just hold still. They will. Give me a second. Come on, think about it. Mechanism there. That's celestial bronze. Oh. Here we go. Celestial bronze is what your sword is made of. If you're a human, it'll pass right through you. If you're a monster. Or a demigod. Demigod. It will kill. Safe to say this is not just some amusement park. Think about the relationships. Oh God, build this. Yep, think about the relationships. Build some amusement parks. How fast is this? There we go. Maybe he finds them amusing? It's really not funny, Annabeth. Come on, think of the Aphrodite angle. Oh, look at that. What have you spotted? That's cool. Annabeth! <laughs> She's just admiring it. If that was a nice touch of like, sort of, I guess ADHD, just that whole distractibility. Bush? Yep. <laughs> you won't die. Because weren't you the one this morning who saw the fate say one of us is going to die and we should take it? <laughs> just push. What has she seen? <gasps> what was that? Okay. It's meant to scare us. Ah. Plus, Festus doesn't want you dying here. He wants it to be a spectacle. Two. Ares and Aphrodite. <laughs> I love this. You're just like a Twitter warrior or something like that. You're just causing fights everywhere. We've met before. Been around a long time, little boy. I'm 24. Good for you. <laughs> it's still little to him. We met at the solstice on Olympus. I'm a fan. Really? Satyrs worship flowers. Satyrs sing songs about their feelings. Satyrs are not fans of mine. <laughs> Satyrs are children of nature. Nature is brutal. Red and tooth and claw, right? Okay, this is cool. He's adding a lot more to Grover. I prefer the Turbot War. The Lobster War. The 335 Years War. He's actually interested. Wow. Those are wars where hardly anyone died. I like your mellower stuff. There's something cool about- Ah, uh, you're trying to get him to like have less violence. So tell me where we met again. Okay, he's interested. Can you actually manipulate a god? It's an interesting angle to go with, going with like peaceful wars, because it still falls into Ares, I guess, jurisdiction. Like not peaceful wars, but like less violent ones. If it belongs to the god of craftsmen, what was the god of war doing here? Aren't they enemies? Exactly, come on. If I'm guessing, Ares has always had a thing with Aphrodite. There we go. She's Hephaestus' wife. And you know some of the myths, great. He met her here? In her husband's park? It's, mm. That's so wrong. Is it actually Hephaestus' park? It was just like, like Date location. No people were around. This family is a mess. A big one. Getting creepy. Where do you think Aphrodite and Ares went? This must be where Ares and Aphrodite got caught. The shield must be in there. We just gotta go get it. Yeah, bit more before you get to that there. Sure. Let's go check out the scary ghost ride. Okay, peacefully entering, nice. So yeah, I guess Grover isn't around, so yeah, so some stuff does have to change. But I'm still hoping you get in that like mechanical spider thing, because that it shuts Annabeth down completely. And I do want that angle on her. We've already had the foreshadowing of her being without fear, which isn't true. What is love, baby? <laughs> what is going on? Oh? What is that? That looks... What is that? I can't tell if this is part of the ride or if it's magical. I'm guessing it's part of the ride. Wait. No, that's Hera. That's Hephaestus' story. It's Hephaestus' story. Rejected by Hera. Yeah. Rejected by Aphrodite. You didn't Zeus force Aphrodite to marry Hephaestus? She said this is what the gods are like to each other. Yep, and Hephaestus is always the most tragic one. She was trying to keep me away from you guys. Yeah, she was afraid. Maybe she should have been preparing me better. No, she prepared you plenty. When you got to us, you'd be different than this. Yes. Your mum is what makes you different than all of this. Hey. Well, oh, what's uh, oh! Okay, this has gone from lovey dovey to more like a roller coaster. Great. Oh no. Bell of crystals, is this taking you, you even in the theme park anymore? Is this even part of the ride? Okay, it is. Great. 
And there you go. There it is. Shield. There is shield. And of course, that doesn't look like it's some place he'd put it. You need to get off the boat. Come on, Percy, control the water. Get off the boat. No. This this was in the boat. This is cool. Oh, maybe you fear the water? That would explain the whole... That would be fitting for the whole Athena Poseidon war thing. Oh, yes! I can't see what's happening. Did he say... What did he do? She good? And she's fine. Okay, awesome. Did you just pull me out of there with that water power stuff? No. It was? Did you just... I don't know. What? What did you do? Figuring this out as I go. I love how they're, like, demonstrating the powers. It's almost... It's... They're show they're not able to show us all of it because Percy doesn't understand half of it. So why should we be able to see the entirety of what he can do yet? How are we supposed to get that thing down? You get on each other's shoulders. Climb the statue. You gotta think like Festus. This is a trap. If Harry wants to shield back, he's gotta sit down. It's a machine, but how do you start the machine? You can see all the cogs on the chair. What if there are cameras around to like display this to Olympus? I hate my own kids. Maybe less than other kids, but still not fond of them. Look what I made. What are butterflies for my knee hurt? Poor Clarice. But that night, when everyone's kids show up for the winter solstice, and I have to sit through their presentation, that night is the worst night of the year every year by far. Okay, so they're actually adding that. This is something they left out at the start, so we're actually getting to see that the campers have been to Olympus, where the Master Vault was. Not many people who could pull it off. Someone Hades could have recruited for the job. Do you know he knows? Bold enough to cross Zeus, is stealthy enough to get their hands on the en thing. Enough. Not everything is a puzzle that needs to be solved. You're as bad as my sister. Who's his sister? Was she always like that? Your sister. Which one was that? Athena. Oh, oh, that's... Oh, yeah. Battle strategy. War. Makes sense. Complicated than they need to be, so people will think she's smarter than you. You really are connecting with him! <laughs> Thank you. I can't be the only one who sees it, right? This is such a weird dynamic. I'm loving it. If she's so smart, explain the owl. She talks to it, like, all the time, this fat, nasty little feather. <laughs> like her best friend. And we're so sure that she's a genius and I... <laughs> nor anything at all that doesn't fit the story they like to tell themselves. Exactly. Like you being the one to find the lightning thief and not her. What'd you do? What'd you do? We both know your friend didn't steal the bolt. Zeus thinks he did, which is kind of all that matters, right? Shut up. Oh, okay, now you know. What are you praying for? Hephaestus offered it to Hera, but as soon as she sat in it, oh, she yeah. it up. It's that chair. Is it that chair? It was too strong. It was too much. How did they beat it in the myth? The chair is the bargain. One of us goes in. But it means Hephaestus can let you out. That seems pretty clear. I know, that's why I said wait. This isn't the arch seaweed brain. You're not pushing me into the stairwell again. Yes, I am. I'm not gonna let you this time. Mm. Wait. It's why you're here. Excuse me? When I was choosing my team, I told Chiron I needed someone who wouldn't hesitate to sacrifice me if the quest required it. Yeah, here we go. Come on, you got to. This is going to play into their emotions, their relationship. Awesome. Your whole thing is about sacrifice. I can't believe it, but the fates were right. Mm -hmm. There's no getting around this. It will be. We dodged at the arch. Barely. But maybe this isn't something you can dodge forever. Nearly dying is your entire story. That You're better at this than me. You just are. And you know it. No. I wish there was another way this quest succeeds. I just don't see it. Come on, get in the chair. Oh, and there's something actually giving you the pen for wheel. Now, it's so clear that they have feelings for each other now. I love the acting. They're doing so well. I need you to promise me something. I'm not leaving the underworld without your mom. There we go. Oh. I was gonna say when this quest is done, can you maybe swing back here and try to get me out of this thing? You think you had to ask? Oh, so you're okay that is probably not gonna kill you. Unless you're just saying that so to make them feel better. But this is interesting. This wasn't like the trap in the book. He used metal spiders that would cover them. Okay. This stuff's moving. Okay, how's it gonna trap you? It's weird. How so? Can you get up? Warm. Warm. Comfortable? Oh, okay, there's the gold. Kinda looks like cobwebs, more maybe leave, I guess. Stand up. I don't think he can. can't. He can't, it's done. I'm okay. You're good? You're fine? I'm okay. Oh, that's just melting into gold. Okay, this is new, this is cool. I'm You're what? He's just a gold statue now. And he is. He'll be fine. 
Yep, disrespectful, just drop him on the ground. Love it, Hephaestus. How are you gonna get him out of this? This is new, this has puzzled me. Like, what happened in the book? The book, it was like displayed to Olympus, and what? Well, uh, it was the spider thing in the web. You got down here after the boat crashed, but I can't remember how you got out. Can you figure it out? Come on, you can figure this out. Come on. Oh, doors open. Can I help you? Okay, who's that? Do you need some help finding your way out? Hey, but, but, but. Hephaestus? Are they brought Hephaestus in now? I'm not leaving without my friend. Yeah, that isn't really how it works. Kind of a one-way sort of thing. No, it can be undone. How do you know? Because I built it. There we go. Here it is him. This is cool, they brought him in earlier. It kind of makes sense. So they swapped out the whole displaying it to Olympus to actually bring Hephaestus in now. In spite of what my brother might have told you, I am not someone who will be pushed around. Come on, you can see it's not Ares. But this was a lot. Even for her. You can still figure it out. Get out of here with that shield. You're a hero. On your way to the greatest glory. Don't listen. And you will be forgiven. And I will go back to being as it always has been. Nope. As it should be. It isn't how it should be. Oh. Or be eaten. Power and glory and nothing else matters. Percy's rubbed off on her. Ares is that way. Zeus is that way. My mother is that way. Yeah. He's, he's quite different. Can you change him? He isn't that way. He's better than that. Is that just gonna touch Hephaestus? Is... But I don't want to be that way anymore. Can they, wait, is this actually? I won't be like all of you. Are you gonna move Hephaestus? I just won't. Nice one, keep trying. Please figure it out. Are you gonna let him go? Because you don't want to be like Ares and the rest of your family? No? Did you do it? You moved a god! Did this actually work? What's he doing? And it worked. You out, she's reasoned with a god and kind of changed it. Well, I wouldn't say changed, probably just a one time thing, but still. And he's out of the chair. Great. Don't step back into it. You're a good kid, Annabeth. I'll put in a good word with your mom for you. Ah, oh, okay. You have an ally with a god. Great. And they're back. Does the mist hide the shield? Probably not. Where's our ride? Is it the awful truck? Kindness into... Oh, it is it. Oh, we can actually see animals in there. Get in. <laughs> I really don't care, but in a few hours, this thing is going to be at the Lotus Casino in Vegas. Lotus? Mies hangs out there. You play your cards right. No, Mies. Personal driver can get you to LA in minutes. Here. Close. Cash, Drachmas to summon her. The magic backpack. We're not gonna fail. Mm -hmm. I'm getting pretty tired of you saying. Oh, here we go. You think you know who I am, but you don't. Just be. Mm. And if you aren't careful. Bad idea, bad idea. You're gonna find out. Percy. He likes that though. End the ride. We're gonna take you up on that too. Okay, off you go. Get in the truck. Hey, you I love your smugness. You're perfect. I was something. It's not that nice of you. No. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, still haven't ended. We're going to continue into the next chapter a little. Great. We're going to see what animals it is, because there are like three main ones at least. If it gets us where we need to go, that's all that matters. Assuming Ares was telling the truth, he wasn't. What? He was holding something back. Yes, the fact that he stole the bolt. He technically kind of have it. I think I got it out of him. I know who stole the master bolt. Really? Early? What? Don't end. Come on. Wait, does, does Grover actually know? Does he know it was Ares that basically did it? I mean, it makes sense. One of the prophecy, part of the prophecy is the god who turned. You've just met the first one, the god of war, who would bet, who would gain the most from causing war between Zeus and Poseidon. That would be so cool if Grover actually got it. Like, it's annoying that they actually have the bolt right now in their possession. And it's like, they don't know it. It's just, ah. Be a little disappointed though, no spiders. That is a shame. I mean, that could be brought up again because they've done, they've mixed things up before, like with the fates showing up now instead of later. So they could bring the spiders in. I'm just hoping it's done in season one. They could do it in any other season. I'm just hoping it is brought in at some point because it's such a big thing. And like Arachne is probably my favorite storyline from the franchise. So I'm hoping that she, I'm hoping that the spider thing, because it's such an important part. And it's like, it brings in that weakness for Annabeth that she is something for her to overcome. Yeah, I guess they are kind of, they replace that fear that she now has the fear of losing Percy. The kid who is constantly going to try and sacrifice himself. 
So they at least have that going. Okay. Oh, Iris message! More to this than just the bolt. Something bigger. Hey, demigods. Welcome. Hermes. Problem. Lotus Hotel. And, yep, they were like, okay, cool. And just, and the ocean, great. Okay. Uh, it, it's bothering me that we have to wait a whole week for that, but it, it's worth it. It's, yeah, the, I doubt, I don't think the show would be as, like, it wouldn't be as memorable if it was done all in one. I like that it is week by week, but it's frustrating that we have to wait a whole week for it. But I now have a week to digest what I've just watched. Okay, that episode was really good. I think the only thing that's like, a no the only thing that can make this better is if it had a longer runtime. Like, that was 40 minutes, I think, and it's just, that was I had that extra 20 minutes I think they could have fit in everything they needed to that I mean they still fit everything they need to it just I think you would have had the spiders thing you would have had I guess more exposure on the whole Festus Ares thing but again that did super well the only thing it was lacking was the spiders that's the only issue I have with this episode and even that we got that explored again it was it, the whole point of the spiders is to show Annabeth's fear that was the point of that in that was the point of it at this point in the book the entire point of it is to demonstrate Athena's uh, all her children have the fear of spiders and all the spiders are out to get children of Athena. And it's basically another feud in mythology with Arachne and Athena. But in the book, this the purpose of it was showing that Annabeth has fear and it was something for her to overcome. She completely froze and shut down and couldn't do anything. That was what it demonstrated and it was something for her to overcome. And here they kind of have it where it might not be something that it completely shut her down, but it was she still had that fear. Ares said that she was completely fearless and without fear, she wasn't. When she is now afraid of Percy sacrificing himself because she has feelings for him. And they are starting to get that Percybeth thing started. Well, not just started, just really going into it now. But again, the whole spider thing, that has plenty of opportunities to be brought back. It doesn't have to be done here because I imagine the, sea, the budget for that whole scene would have been a lot. Having a bunch of tiny mechanical spiders running around trying to encase the heroes in webs, that would have been a nightmare. I think having the chair instead still doing the encasing that bounced over and I guess it would have been better budget-wise because they still have the practical seat. The only effect being take, done there was the goal at covering Percy. And I think the only thing stopping this show, or just not, there's nothing stopping the show. The only thing that's impeding the show right now is budget and one time. Get those sorted with future seasons and it's gone, it's golden. Ares was absolutely fantastic. I love him so much. He, he definitely was exactly how I pictured him in the book. Shame, no fire thing, but again, Budget, plenty of opportunity in the future to add that in. He was just as intimidating, just as nasty and as spiteful. He was just, he's a bully. He wants to get a rise out of people and to provoke people. Perfect. I think the only thing I was a little unhappy about with that is that, I guess, Percy kind of showed it at the end, but it came off more as rightful that he was angry at Ares, which is, I guess, fine. In the books, it, demonstra it explains it, that just being around Ares provokes you and it makes you want to do bad things. That's what just being in his presence does. They didn't show that that well here, because of course you had Annabeth, who was completely fine, calm, and normal. And Grover, who was, again, calm, didn't have, didn't feel a thing. They still had Percy having that sort of, he was being provoked, and that was fine. And I think the one thing that's really interesting about this episode is that they made a huge change in that Grover actually stayed at the restaurant with Ares. That's a big difference. In the book, he went with them, he went to the water park, but of course he did get separated when they went into the Tunnel of Love that's when he was separated. So the separation was still there. They just brought in early and actually had it serve, I guess, a better purpose because he just, he couldn't follow them. Now it's basically, he's forced to stay behind and also let him tr start thinking about it and, pro and like probing Ares for information. And I like they are adding in that detective work because again, the book, I think it's meant to be so almost simple. Like the reader can pick up where things are going. They can realize maybe H Hades, the Camillus probably isn't the most obvious answer. And they start thinking about it, and it's like it's nice that the demigods have almost been put into the reader's position. They're starting to think how the reader would be thinking at this moment. But it'd be so interesting if Grover's actually figured it out and actually knows that Ares so he helped steal the bolt, and that it would it would be so cool if that actually happened. Like we know their conflict is coming. The whole god who betrayed thing. It's so obviously Ares because who would gain the most from having a giant war between the gods? The god of war, he wouldn't want to stop it, he'd want to encourage it. So it makes perfect sense, it's very obvious, so it's fitting, it doesn't feel out of place that they would figure it out early. Okay, just to start off, I definitely think I preferred the last episode, because I think with that one, they didn't really take anything away, it was just added, especially with Echidna, it just, it, that episode almost made, it was almost better than the chapters we had in the book. Here, they did take something away, and that just, it does bug me, but again, there's opportunity for it to be improved. Things can be added. It's not the end of the world. 
and it was the spider thing. I think for me, I just found that like a quite an important moment because of how it affects Annabeth. She's always seen as this tough, steely character where nothing can bother her. And she's always the smartest, she knows how to get th around things, but the spiders completely shut her down. And I think it was just a huge character moment that might have been missed here, but that doesn't mean they can't add it in somewhere else. But yeah, the episode was good. I think just disappointed we didn't get spiders, but Ares, great, the whole the, the plot line where he got more info on the gods and their situation, perfect. And I guess Percy constantly having to sacrifice himself. All of that is so fitting and perfect for what the book is. Now, another big change was obviously Grover staying with Ares. And I kind of like that. This chap the chapter in the book was basically very much devoted to Percybeth, Annabeth and Percy's relationship and having that develop into a more romantic one. And it kind of left Grover on the sideline. He didn't really have that much to do. So I like that instead of him just being at the side or flying around with his shoes, they actually have him do something equally as important as getting the shield, as getting information out of Ares. It gave him another purpose and it just solidifies that all three have a huge role to play in this. Like even having him sort of connect and bond with Ares was quite an interesting thing because it makes sense. Nature is brutal. So of course Grover can see like the upside of or he can connect with Ares in that way. And it's such, like, the connection is honestly, it's just interesting that it's there. Like, you don't think about it that way, because Grover is almost, I don't want to say hippie in that way, but he's, like, he's happy, he's easygoing, it's that sort of thing. To him, sort of connecting with the god of war, it's just, it's quite out there, but it worked really well. And, of course, here, that scene basically added in very important context with basically saying that there was a thing on Olympus where Camp Half-Blood was there. He brought them all, they apparently they were there for a presentation. And so that is, at least they've got that in. But it was a field trip, now it's a presentation, a bit more important, but oh no, so I guess it would be the same thing still. But at least that sets up how it's happening. So it wasn't explicitly said like it was in the books, which made it quite obvious of where, how things got where. So that is something that could easily be missed. That is perfect, like subtle hints and clues of what, what the story is going to lead to. So yeah, very happy that they like added that in because now he can piece, start piecing together. And that probably is what led Grover to start thinking about it all. He probably realizes now that it's probably a demigod from Camp Half-Blood that stole the bolt and had help from one of the gods. So he's starting to think of that now, and I'm just glad that people are putting the pieces together and they are acting like they're reading the book. They're not just going along blindly. They are starting to put pieces together. Percy, of course, absolutely perfect. Now, I think, again, one time needs to be, I would I would want the one time to be longer because then they cut the scene with the Nereid, I guess. We didn't actually hear the Nereid say that he needs to go to Santa Monica. It's just that we heard Percy say that's what he's been told, that, that it's where he needs to go. But it's also great that he's almost happy about being saved by his dad. He, that The whole relationship is flipped now. His dad saved him, told him he was proud of him, and it's almost I wouldn't washed away the anger he's had for him. So it's it's awesome that it's developed like that, and he's actually given him hope that they're going to meet, and it's just so nice to see. Now, since this is past the halfway point, we actually have Percy stepping more firmly into this world. He's now fully on board with the quest, knows what he has to do. I guess he's trying more with the water stuff. So now he's actually I'm glad that they didn't wait till the end of the season for him to fully like accept this is the world he's in now. He's done it in here. Now we can have the rest of the show where he's fully into the world and it's not almost finding it. We've gotten past the finding it. He's nowhere is. Now we have to just get through the rest of the story. And of course, at the end, you have his whole sacrifice thing. So they've done that twice now. I suppose he's basically tried to sacrifice himself and it's very fitting with the book. It's something he always does. So it's glad that they're bringing it over here. Like they even changed this I can't because yeah, I can't remember this battle precisely. I read the I literally read the chapter like a week ago. And yeah, I can't remember how this one went. I know they had the spider thing at the start, then they got flushed in the tunnel of love because Percy had to do something with the water. And then I can't remember what happened after that. Yeah, the shield and I think Aphrodite's scarf was at the bottom of this pool thing uh, in a boat. And then the spiders came in. The water started, they got on the boat, and then they got flushed down the Tunnel of Love. But I can't remember what happened after that. Yeah, I, all I know is that this was almost, it's a change, but it's a good change that they're continuing this trend of him trying to sacrifice himself, and that's just his thing. It's definitely building up, I guess, for all the future seasons where he's going to do this countlessly. But yeah, Annabeth absolutely loved in this episode. They're truly just doing such a wonderful job of just showing her emotion and, like, her conflicted thoughts on Percy. She doesn't have to say it, we can see it. Like the hug at the start, it shows that she's happy that he's alive, but it's also weird. She's this smart girl. She, I, has she really touched anyone really? It must be a big thing for her to like actually make physical contact in a way with basically a stranger. So she already has that close connection. After the whole thing where he basically said that he thought they would never be friends, they're already growing that relationship. So they are friends now, that cemented that. And now they are exploring more, 
I guess, a love interest there. Then, of course, her story points in this episode was basically Ares saying that she's fearless and has no fear. So it's already setting her up as this cold, steely character. Now, I'm guessing what they're going to do is they're going to spread that out and have it, I guess, it's going to be picked apart more because we've already seen that she does have fear of losing Percy, but it wasn't focused on a lot. She came, still came off as confident and she even convinced a god to free him. Amazing. Now, I'm assuming we're going to see more of that fear happen soon. So maybe when she gets fearful enough, she will break down like she does with spiders and it will be something that will be, it will need resolving at some point. I'm just trying to think of ways they can add in that fear because it was such a big thing for Annabeth. And if they're not going to go the spider route, there is plenty of ways to do it. And there's hints that they've set up, which I'm hoping that they continue with. Like, I'm probably going to stay on the spider thing for a while and like, I know some uh, like people out there that just don't want any change. I think this is the only thing that I was really hoping for because it's it sets up Heroes of Olympus and it's such a big thing for Annabeth with the Arachne storyline. And that was one of my favorite sort of stories. They're in Tartarus of all places and they actually meet the Weaver who I think that was probably my favorite myth growing up. I don't know why, that's the one that I remember most. So just having that detail of all the Athena's children be connected this way with like the Weaver and stuff like that and spiders. I really like that story, so I'm hoping that they continue adding it. Um, be patient, they don't have to add it immediately where it was in the book, they can add it anywhere else if they want to, I just hope that it is in there, because it would help set up Heroes of Olympus, because I do want that show, and I want that adaptation. And if they are going to do it, they do need to set up the spider thing soon. But of course, I really loved that she actually managed to convince Hephaestus to free Percy, so they are going more into the whole dysfunctional family of the gods and that Percy is not like that and they're trying, they're almost in a way setting up like they want to help fix what the gods are, which of course that's never going to happen. And that's kind of explored in Trials of Apollo, where even Apollo realises everything that's happened. So maybe Rick is sort of leaning into what character development he gave to Apollo here. Yeah, I doubt Hephaestus is like a changed man forever now. Because he's, he's very bitter and he's been around for the start of time. So one little speech from Annabeth isn't going to change him permanently. Probably just enough to have for your friend. But yeah, I think it's just very cool that we're getting to see that Annabeth is this powerful character without fighting. She uses words, she uses her smarts, she is convincing and I'm just so happy with it. But yeah, another thing that I love was the little story, or not storyline, the little animation of Hephaestus' story. I absolutely loved how he put, like, um, what was it? how he depicted Hera. It was not flattering at all, and because that's what he views his mother, because the myth was Hera was angry that Zeus would go around having all these children, so she wanted to get back at him by having a child of her own, but she couldn't because she's the goddess of marriage, so she can't actually break her vows by cheating. So she ends up making a child herself. When she sees Hephaestus, she throws him out a window and throws him off Olympus. He climbs back up and tricks her with the throne. So absolutely love how much they played into that. And I cannot wait to see Hera in this show because she's such a pain, especially in Heroes of Olympus. And I just, from that setup alone, that even Hephaestus doesn't like it, it sets up her character so well. And that's something I'm really loving from this season already, that they're, they're planting all these seeds, all these future characters, like even Aphrodite, the mention of her and like the animations of her. Like, we don't have to see these characters. They're already sh setting up what they are like. Also, I did enjoy the fates, but I do think that that was kind of brushed over quite quickly. In the books, it was a very unsettling scene. I like that they actually still brought them in and it was Annabeth that saw them, which was perfectly fine story-wise. But still, I wish that we had a longer scene, almost focused on it. I w if I would have done it, I'd have had Annabeth just focus on them so much, have all the sound drown out and just have it focus on the snipping sound of the thread and just have it just cement how terrifying that must have been because it, it just they almost got drowned out in the scene with the ambulances and stuff like that but yeah i think pacing is better it's getting still going better from the first couple of episodes still i think the first part of it was very rushed like how we didn't get to see the nereid and this, like the message about meeting poseidon of course they did that through percy but yeah i think a lot of it is budgetary and runtime those are the main issues they get more they get a bigger budget they actually have an hour long episode like an actual hour like 60 minutes 50 60 minutes have that as the episode I think this show will do so much better. Yeah, cannot wait for the next episode now. I'm actually going to go to the Lotus Casino. So, because yeah, that one, I went up to, where did I read up to recently? I've gone to the zebra thing. So I've done the zebra. I don't, uh, yeah, I think I have gone into the, finished the chapter with the casino, yeah, finished the casino chapter. So done up to there. But yeah, the, it was a very long chapter and they spent a while in the truck. But it's nice to see from the little teaser, we're actually going to see the Iris message. So we're going to get the whole thing with Luke because that did happen he, that was meant to happen in this chapter, but of course they've moved it, which is fine, and I'm loving sort of how we're getting to see it. So we're going to do the Iris message. Hopefully we'll also have the whole Lord of the Horses thing where Percy will talk to a zebra, and of course we'll go into the casino, and I'm hoping it looks amazing. For already from the outside, it looks phenomenal, so I can't wait to see 
how on earth this place looks on the inside. And I am kind of hoping for maybe a Nico and Bianca cameo, because that would be cool. But of course, they probably haven't been cast yet. But then again, I think Percy does dream about Thalia in the book when he's on the truck with the animals on it. So they might have maybe have rough castings of the characters yet, or at least enough to have a, like a good image of what the character is going to look like. So maybe we'll get hints at these characters because they are meant to, they're technically in the same place soon or, in, or referenced in this chapter. Nico and Bianca, not exactly, but the place they're in is in this chapter. But yeah, having Hermes actually being in the hotel, that's going to be an interesting change because they were just completely on their own and Percy had to figure out what was happening himself. So hopefully it's still as disturbing. Hopefully it's still as meaningful to Percy that he actually figures it out himself, it's not someone else. But yeah, I'm helping Hermes' only role is to just get them the transport to Los Angeles. That should really all, that should be his only purpose. He shouldn't, I'm hoping he isn't the one that tells them the trap of the casino. Yeah, with that said, that does bring us to the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one for episode six. See ya.